And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age, Struggle for Freedom. This is part 21. Um, I did actually get an update, actually, sometime after I did part 20, uh, about a new patch. Apparently, I jumped way up uh, from patch, I think, 1.3 to 1.6. Uh, one thing you got to notice right here is that uh, this patch, uh, the 1.6 patch, got rid of the quickening shortcuts. Uh, for all the characters here, so um, I believe you have. You, I believe you only got to get your quickenings towards the end of their respective license boards. Um, I don't necessarily know if it's going to affect if I get to use my quick. If I can still use my quickening or not, I don't believe I can. Because uh, I believe right there, I I believe in the menu. I wasn't quite paying attention. I'll try, try to go and look at it. Um, I believe I, um, I'm just going to pause the video actually for just a second here if I could. Right, I'm, just, I'm just basically waiting for the next time I get into an encounter so that way I can see for myself if, uh, if, um, if I still have quickening options or not. I know I had it on both here. Quickening techniques. And then, yeah, I'm still looking, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I, I think I did catch Clems at it, and it, it does seem like that uh, I don't have the quick name learned. I, I think what it may be, actually, now that I think about it, was that, um, was that it may display I have a quickening bar, but I don't actually have the quickening learned anymore. At, at least not until I um, go back into the um, um, license board and relearn it. I suppose um, I, I don't think it'll I don't think it'll have a significant impact on uh, my gameplay overall. Um, but but if anything, I know Eternal said he would offer a quick fix to make sure that it's working again. So I'm not gonna be worried too much about that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, there's also a number, there's also a couple of new techniques that um, I get to show off as well. Something that didn't occur to me to show off until I, I mess around with Vossler for a little bit. Um, I do jump cut for a bit to skip an area that we've already seen. Because this place, like I said before, is very, very long. Um, the other, uh, I know going back into the uh, Zertanian Caverns is... A bit of a waste because you've already seen this before, but there's one thing I do show off actually that you can find that is actually kind of important, at least in terms of um, item hunting that you can find. Uh, like, like uh, I got the wind helmet for uh, for Balthia, which is nice, you know, having auto float, being able to skip traps can be pretty nice. Uh, speaking of that, I have heard that in the changes, I think one of the changes was that, um, was that guest characters are immune to traps. Which is actually pretty interesting in this case. <clears throat> oh yeah, there was also another skill too that uh, you can pick up in the mass in the um, li license board is for I believe Fran, Balthier, and Vaughn, they can get an augment called Master Thief, which uh, has better odds of stealing. Which I'm assuming means you got rid of um, the Thief Gloves entirely, or is the Thief Gloves still in there and that with the Thief Gloves and Master Thief combined, you're guaranteed to steal. Um, you're, you're guaranteed to steal, I think, even the rarest of items. Uh, if, if that's the case, and it does make item hunting a lot more convenient, I think, anyways, when it comes to stealing. Uh, part of the reason why I'm pausing a bit was because uh, I noticed when I was a quarter, I, I do experience some um, raindrops once in a while. I'm just trying not to move as much to make sure that um, uh, when I'm when I'm, I'm, I'm recording this with OBS. Um, it's the best way for me to record Steam games anyway, or any other um, games in general. Um, that that doesn't that that can go beyond just an emulator. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm doing that because of <clears throat> excuse me, uh, my laptop could handle it at times. It's just that once in a while. Um, I'm not sure if it's because of my CPU overclocking or what, whatever else is going on. 
Uh, but it does tend, but it does tend to drop frame rate once in a while, which does affect the video quality a little bit. So I'm trying to negate that as best as I can by simply just staying still and just let uh, the fr the frame frame rate pick up again, back to its proper 30 frames per second, which is how I'm have I am recording this. Um, I know it could run I know it could run 60 frames per second. The only thing is that um. Uh, my laptop isn't that strong to handle a 60 frame per second game while recording. I would need like a supercomputer, like a really, really matte, pimped out um, gaming computer to do that. Something that would cost like maybe 1500 bucks or something to get, which I don't have the money for right now. So I'm going to have to sell with what I got. Um, oh yeah, but I am playing this on a PS4 controller though. One cool thing about Steam is that it can pick up on basically any third-party controller, uh, as well as any um, licensed controller. Um, I'm using a licensed, uh, an actual official PS4 controller for this. I'm just, I'm just getting used to the buttons again. Um, because uh, my Logitech controller, while similar to the PS4 controller, I just felt like I change it up a bit just to give myself a bit more of an authentic feel for it. Yeah, that treasure right over there is something I actually, um, uh, go ahead and grab, which is Sight Unseen. What that does is, if you're under the blind status, you, I believe what that does is it allows you to do extra damage while you're blinded. So, in that sense, you can let yourself get blinded and you can just use Sight Unseen to deal extra damage. Although I don't... I don't necessarily know the gambit that can just auto-trigger it instead of having you manually just do it yourself. Um, that'll be something I'll have to experiment with very shortly. Um, oh yeah, and uh, Vossler I think has a couple of new techniques you can, um, I can show off here. Just don't remember when I get to it. Uh, I get to it right here actually. Uh, we got Blitz and I think now he also has Soul Eater. So Soul Eater can do um, one point four times more damage to an enemy, but consumes HP. Um, so it was like a darkness um, type move. And Blitz is just like an AoE attack. I think Soul Eater and Blitz are weapon based, though I want to say. Uh, which is why Boss was doing pretty low damage. Or to just the, uh, the Spirit Tongues, which is high defense in general. I mean, then again, this is technically a more of a difficult area, so I can see why I'm doing less damage. We were checking the map again to see how much further I need to go, so I decided to say, fuck it, and flee. And right here is where I jump cut to the next area that I have not shown off as of yet. Um, but you, but, um, it, it's just that what's frustrating about this area, not frustrating, I think, rather dull about this area, I should say, is that you are seeing a lot of the same enemies over and over. I mean, on the one hand, I guess if you want to, um, start a chain up, you can most certainly do that. It's actually one of the better places to start a chain, but, uh, this particular chain, though, all you gotta be getting is just earth stones and maybe occasional items here and there, which honestly I don't think is really that worth it. At least starting a chain again with the skeletons at the Lushu mines earlier would have been reasonable enough, because um, bone fragments actually sell for quite a bit. I mean, I mean, obviously there would be much better loot for you to hunt down for later, but I'm talking about like early on. It won't be too bad. All right. Um, as far as what else is going on today, um, you know, I'm still used doing my usual FTM in a live streams. Um, I might be switching up uh, another stream I want to do in the future. I did mention I want to do a Castlevania game. I might even do a Mega Man game, a uh, classic Mega Man at least, before I jump into the X series. Uh, I have beaten X's one through four on the X collection. Um, I mean, I, I, I can probably do the classic Mega Man series, do, going from 9 to 10, and, and then maybe uh, if I can learn how to stream with the Switch, I can go to Mega Man 11 at some point. 
And, and maybe if I want to stream a new RPG. Actually, an RPG I've always wanted to stream for everyone uh, at some point or another would be Octopath Traveler. Like, that's another solid game that um, I've been thinking about playing again. I have beaten the game all the way through. It took me three months to beat it. Because I could always just play it like hours on end, but I have beaten it. Um, some of the boss fights are actually fun. Some some are pretty annoying. Um, one final final boss is really incredibly daunting. That uh, it required like a, a specific setup just to be able to beat him. For those of you who have played uh, Octopath Traveler before, would know what I'm talking about. Um, but but definitely at some but definitely at some point I would like to stream uh, other games in the future and and, and and you know try to continue to get better at some Metroid as well. Um, even though I have beaten the game a couple times and I like that game a lot, it's just that trying to um, wall jump with the old USB and Nintendo controller can be a bit finicky. And I, I also discovered with my Logitech Logitech controller, um, uh, I can't do the Shine Spark properly. So I so as a result the stream kind of sees me like stumbling quite a bit. Um, uh, maybe, maybe perhaps I could start over on Met Super Metroid. Not that I got that that far in. I mean I haven't got I haven't gotten to the right ship yet. And I and I would try to see if I can take down Kraid a lot faster than I did. Well, I mean, I took I still took Kraid Kraid down pretty fast, but I'm gonna try to see if I can take him down take him down just as fast, not get faster at it. I'll have to figure it all. I'll have to figure all that out. Well, once I get some practice in, of course. But anyways, um, yeah, pretty much other than that, I did get the new Resident Evil 2 remake. I'm gonna try that out as of today. Um, I just, uh, I'm gonna do this first, but I've also been busy, um, uh, looking around for other full-time job opportunities. I mean, I'm still working with Amazon as a part-timer, but, um, been focusing on, like, interviews and such. That's another thing that's been taking up a little, quite a bit of my time, um, as well. It's fine to, uh, because sometimes finding a full-time job, is, especially the one you're gonna like, it's not gonna be as easy as it sounds. But that's all real life stuff, anyways. And you know, once again, I'm just standing around only because uh, frame rate issues. I'm not sure what causes it. I'm not sure if it's because of um, again my computer being overclocked, or maybe it's just uh, the emulation. Cause I'm playing this off. Cause I'm playing this off uh, Steam, of course. I'm not sure the emulation sometimes causes the frame rate to drop a little bit while, while, while I'm recording because the enemies appear so much, so much on the stream. Um. But it only seems it only seems to lag for just a few seconds, and I think that won't. It's not it's not plaguing my playthrough that much. Thankfully, it just happens to creep up once in a while. And thank God I found myself a save crystal. And I've been needing that. Not only that, but an item shop. Like I should sell my stuff and um, stock and stock up here. I'm trying to remember why I didn't leave this. Oh, I, I think I know why I left. I left it in because I think I get like a new achievement that I like to show off here. Um, you'll see what that is once I start selling my items. That was my phone going off. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to keep my phone off vibrate so that because I do have another call for another job offer among for another potential job offer I've been hearing about. It's supposed to come in a little while. That's why I have my uh, phone off of vibrate so I can actually hear it. Yeah, we got a new gun for um, uh, for Ball of the Air, which is nice. 
Actually, does a little bit more damage than the uh, Capella, so I might equip him that at some point. In case I ever run to enemies that would be weak to water. I just don't remember... Who would be weak to water? I don't really remember. Mm. I'm sure it'll come to me eventually. I know there's a wind shot, uh, a wind bullet you can get as well. Quite a bit of stock on potions because uh, potions will be, will be my most important healing item at the moment. At least until I can get high potions and then... Um, yep, um, yep, achievement unlocked. Uh, a privateer. Or, or, yeah, privateer. There we go. That's the name of the achievement. Yeah, I know I didn't show off quite, quite everything, but it's mostly the same, so I don't think you would need to see that. Okay, so we are finally at the Nam Yensa Sansi. Um, the next couple parts will definitely cover uh, this area. I don't think it's quite as big, though. Uh, it will cover the next couple parts. We'll definitely cover that, as well as a hunt I did accept um, from a while back that will definitely be following up on. It was kind of me um, trying to re-familiarize myself with the buttons again, because I was trying to, I was trying to switch it to party leader. And I keep forgetting the whole time is to press down, and then once I press down, I hit the circle button to confirm, because I kept hitting X to cancel. Oh well. No, oh, well, I figured it out eventually. Plus, I don't think it really took that long to uh, to figure out. I'm trying to figure out what accessory is nice to give them at the moment. Because uh, the sad thing is that not all my characters can equip the golden uh, amulet yet. Um, I, I cannot wait when I can do that. So that way I can just let them LP uh, grind for a while while they're not in my party. That way they can learn abilities a lot faster. Oh uh, yeah, the, the other item I got um, a few minutes ago I didn't mention was a turtle shell choker. Uh, basically what that does, is it, it converts uh, MP cost to money for using spells. So instead of, uh, let's say, casting cure, I said it cost me 26 MP, it'll cost me 26 gil. Or is it 260? I'm not sure how that works. I'm not sure if it just does it by times 10 or if it just uh, times one, the amount you normally would just to kind of balance it out. Al although, if it is just 26 gil just to cast cure, that'd be really nice. But it's only good if you're filthy rich. In that um, you have a lot of money to blow. <laughs> but that's that's what I think, anyways. Uh, for me, I am not. Ooh. Oh man, sorry, I woke up from a nap before I um. Um, I I, I recorded the part earlier, then decided to take a nap. So I was just feeling a bit tired. I woke up from a nap just a few minutes ago. Um, I think I may or may not use a turtle shell choker only because uh, money is pretty important for me in this playthrough and I definitely need money to restock on items and such. Unless I know a really, really good grinding spot, then I'm probably not going to um, use an accessory anytime soon. And uh, I've also read a comment from someone that uh, that the Shio Gen Dra Dra Dramane, um, uh, that shield that I mentioned before uh, has gotten incredibly nerfed to the point where it now offers, I think, little to no evasion and halves all elements. You can get that via Bazaar instead of, um, uh, is it, is it do some convoluted RNG manipulation thing? Um, halves all elements. I guess if you don't care about evasion and you're already gonna take left hits to begin with, that that could be okay. But I would imagine that Shio's a, is going to see... <sighs> oh my god, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just really tired. I can imagine that Shio's going to be less significantly useful than it, used, than, it, than it was in the original version.
Alright, uh, there is one... Uh, oh yeah, I remember. There's one particular thing we could do in this area to trigger some kind of an event. I will prelude to what that will be um, toward the end of this part, within the next uh, five minutes. Um, pretty much other than that, um, I know the Resident Evil 2 remake um, has the puzzles redone. Um, the police station looks more or less the same. Um, I mean, obviously, what's up there is the graphics and the voice acting and, and things like that. Um, what I'm really curious, though, considering Resident Evil 2 is the very first Resident Evil game I ever played, is how different are the puzzles going to be, or are they going to be relatively the same thing? Because it's one of those games that I played, I used to play over and over again, you know, when I was younger. So I'm really hoping that, um, uh, and I've heard and I've heard some good things about Resident Evil 2 remake. Um, in, ter in terms of um, replayability, I've also heard that um, one review from IGN kind of made a tit kind of made a fool of himself by um, by trying to say the game felt samey, but yet he neglected to play the second scenario, as one of the fans pointed out, and he tried to shrug, shrug it off like it was not a big deal. Uh, some people, I, I I I honestly tend to think it's not necessarily just the comp the uh, the um, people uh, it's more the people of IGN rather than IGN itself that can be uh, that, that, that can be um, uh, not as smart as they think they are let's just put it like that um, because of how they review the game and how they don't really review it all the way through they don't review just a part of it and then already judge it off its merits because here's the thing to me if you can say this, these are my impressions so far you, it, it, to me if you're gonna write an article and you haven't finished the game the best you should do is just give your initial impressions and then give us your final thought once you actually beat the whole thing all the way through because I, I don't like it when reviewers um T t tend to play a game like maybe a tenth of a way through, a quarter of a way through or something, and, and already give it a rating when, when they haven't played the whole way through yet. Like they might say, "Oh, this game it doesn't feel, it doesn't look as good, or it doesn't um, get as good as it was promised to be," uh, but yet they haven't played all all the way through. That's why, um, that's why they don't make the time to review games and actually give it a proper score. Like, like if I were, like if I were review, let's say, um, I'll throw it out there, like a Persona game, I wouldn't just rate it like, oh my God, the first three hours were boring. Therefore, those games must be boring. No, I actually stick with it, play the whole way through, and then if I like it, I tell you I like it, and I tell you why I like it, and do, I, and would I recommend you play it or not? Um, you, you know, you know things like that. Be because because honestly, a lot of games for me, it's going a lot of things for me is either gonna have, you know, some people like to have a game that has a, that has a strong opening and a strong ending. I think the best way to do that is if you're able to maintain interest and excitement throughout. Whereas some games like to build from the build up, um, or deconstruct. And sometimes either method could work as long as the progression is logical. Um, I mean, that, that, that's, I mean, that's how I would view RPGs or story games in general. Anyways, um, I, I know I went on a tangent about INGN reviewers, but you know what I mean. But that's why, that's why I tend to look at other game reviewers firsthand before I look, I even look at things about IGN. Like, I'll look at, like, uh, Kotaku or Metacritic or something. And, um, and and see other reviews as well from YouTubers I know very well, and and seeing and seeing the game for myself too is also another thing too. Um, but there is a major difference between seeing it and playing it. Seeing it might not look so bad, but then when you play, it's a whole different. Uh, it's a whole it's a whole different story. <clears throat> but all right, anyway, I think we're near the end of the part, and this is the. Um, Kind of, it's kind of like a side quest in a way. I just um, go back through here for one second because I kind of want to um, establish the pathway. Because you know how the question mark and now it has the um, name of the next area next time you go back through. Yeah, I just want to get that done. Um, there's a side quest you can do. We can help out the, um, the what you call it, the Yuratan Yensa, where they have to where they have to take down a huge creature that's been. Uh, uh, 
has been, you know, attacking them. And I think once we do beat that creature, I forgot what it was called. Yeah, the giant tortoise. Giant tortoise. Tortoise. There we go. You get, I think, you get a nice little added scene uh, to the game. Uh, but we will go over that next time. <clears throat> next time on Final Fantasy XII: uh, Zodiac Age: Struggle for Freedom. Till then, thanks for watching.